Hello everyone, welcome to the HR Horizon podcast series. I'm Lakshit Pant, your host for today, and we have started this HR Horizon series in order to take the best insights from industry recruiters, industry key performers, and all these HRs, so that we can take the best inputs for all the interviewees, so that they can make most out of their inter in their interviews. Today we have a special guest with us, Rasna Ma'am here. So I request if you could introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, sure. Thank you so much, Lakshit. First of all, for the warm, warm welcome. And uh, I'm Rachna Lula, possessing 10 plus years of experience uh, in the overall HR domain. And I've worked with uh, various brands in my career, like Reliance, Geo, Infosys, LNT, Infotech. Currently, I'm working with Aubergine Solutions. It's an IT service-based company, and uh, successfully, I'm handling the entire HR team. And also, I'm heading uh, the entire uh, you know HR admin team, both the payroll team. Along with that, uh, I have recently got HR 30 and the 30 award as well, and I look after entire HR operations uh, from scratch. Uh, when I joined the company, we were 30, but today we are 100 plus in number. Uh, I bring along my expertise into this domain, and uh, with my help of contributions and everything, uh, hopefully success. Uh, fully, I'm uh, you know also creating a community side by side known as Job Seeker Hub as well. And uh, with uh, an audience range of three lakh plus audience on my page, so I want to uh, help different people along uh, to find the job, how to crack the job, and everything. Wherein uh, definitely my experience, I would love if my experience could help and reach to each and every person who is looking out for job in an industry. So this is all about myself. Yeah, thanks for the um, the amazing introduction, ma'am. And uh, for our audience per se, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick index about what we are going to discuss in this podcast. So we'll be discussing multiple agendas, avenues. Like, uh, ma'am, she has co-founded a really great community as well. She has been really doing a great community work. And also, we'll be discussing from a HR's perspective, like for the those who wants to. Uh, pursue their career in the HR profession, and for uh, and the next session, the next uh, passion of will be of around like how the interview interviewee should uh, maybe uh, can get the best insight from the HR perspective. So let's start from the roles and responsibilities, like what it looks like to be an HR from the for the generic audience. It's like just recruiting other person, but I want to know from your perspective what it looks like to be an HR and what the what are the skills required to deliver the work. See, basically, HR. It's not everyone's cup of tea, right? Uh, people say that you know you can uh, do MBA, you can get into an HR. It is really not like that. I'll be honest. I have uh, switched on my career from uh, from being a software developer into an HR. I'm a software developer turned HR. That's how it is. And uh, when you are an HR, definitely whatever you are learning every day on the field. Will help you fetch much more information. Recruiting is not that easy. Okay, it is not always in everything that you know surrounds recruitment. It is about HR operations. How do you actually manage your day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, uh, life of your employees as well? And uh, let's say in case if you know any of the employees not well, how do you you know ponder upon those uh, dif uh, difficult issues? Might be something is going around in your company. Uh, you know, let's say there are posh things and everything, etc., etc. There is not only HR is not limited to one sector. I would say recruitment is just a part of it. But yes, uh, the major part I would rather say is recruitment. Then you know, timely salary should be processed and everything. Okay, so first today is the first. Okay, so I am into office. I know that I have to you know process the salary and everything. So uh, basically, when it when I talk about HR, we just cannot uh, you know like read book, do MBA, and get into HR. For that, you need to you know have your exposure. You need to do internships and everything. First of all, you need to gather all the information around you know how do you recruit a good talent. Recruiting a good talent is also equally important. Okay, we just cannot hire anyone, any X Y Z person, and we can say okay, you know you can start working from day one. It's not like that. Okay, hiring the talent. Who is right fit for your company? So my golden mantra for recruitment is hire the right talent at right time and at a right place. That is most important. Let's say in case if my requirement is for uh, hiring twenty developers, right? I am giving a I am given a time frame of let's say ten uh, months. Okay, I am told Rachna, you need to hire X number of developers for X num uh, you know X number of projects in the company. What if if I don't hire it on a right time? Will those developers be useful later on? No, because in a service based industry, I need it at the time when there is a requirement. Okay, so definitely hiring 
is a very important and a crucial part and also finding the right match for your organization the person should be culturally fit see technical skills we can teach anyone but cultural skills we cannot right those are inculcated when we are born okay so definitely hire a right person at a right time at a right place who is a great culture fit for your organization that is all about age yeah and definitely i totally agree with your points and uh, you know there are more it's a very daunting task to to recruit a person you have to understand the thought process you have to understand people and you know uh, yeah. learning the psychology yeah. of a people's mind uh, reading the psychology of people's mind your in your in your organization or as well it's a very very hectic task to perform and it's um, so there are multiple untouched things that people are mostly unaware of what yeah. hrs do so uh, there is one question that arrives like Mm-hmm. any practice that you follow as you have shared your mantra so i just wanted to know mm-hmm. any practice that you follow with your employees to make a true connection to make a good uh, fruitful connection in your organization to build a good culture of development and teamwork okay a very good question lakshit i would say see uh, basically what happens is many a times hr are into their own set of things right but what i try to do uh, for keeping the fruitful connections going on i try to have one on one with employees okay i try to do skip meetings now what are these you know skip meetings generally it's a random meeting i put it on calendar of a person okay let's say for 30 minutes i try to block a person's calendar and i just say them come we will speak on the table okay whatever things that you have in your mind not necessary with regards to development projects or something any personal professional issue that you are going through just come and speak to me and i'll be there to assist you right away okay and always show a promising side of being an hr to an employee that you are always there for that person that is most important now when i say when i onboard any person right i try to have a connection from the day one when i send an offer letter we try to send a box of chocolates goodies etc etc we try to stay connected okay is everything going fine at your home are you perfectly fine you know have you put down your resignation papers and everything so may i know what time can i expect you to join us is there any possibility you can join me early so there is a phone call at every shorter duration in a month that goes because the notice period is generally for a person a notice period is 60 days 90 days right that person can definitely vouch for other offers as well correct but over here what i try to do is i try to have a small phone call asking that particular person are you doing perfectly fine did you receive our goodies how did you felt receiving our goodies etc okay so now it helps me stay in touch with people till a person joins and after a person joins i still have one on one conversation with that particular person how was your onboarding did everything go well do you have any feedbacks for us so see taking feedback is also equally important right and that way a employee will feel that yeah this hr is really appreciating my presence in an organization and that is where that person comes and directly shares xyz things that okay rachna i am facing xyz problems behave more like a friendly person to them okay then the person will actually speak all the problems and everything and this is how you will actually have a connection from the day you send an offer letter till day the person is there in an organization try to have a time for your employees i i would suggest that yeah and uh, you know uh, as you mentioned so i just have a follow up quick follow up question as you mentioned you yeah. try to build this connection so uh, because so there are lots of different people every people has a yeah. different mindset i just yes. wanted to know how you manage your personal and professional life because when you want to build that connection sometimes it happens because this is how it is right huh. i just to be very honest sometimes it happens like there is a mix of personal and professional life how do you manage to you know to with these situations and with the, see, these kind of employees see basically what happens is uh, whenever we are on to the field okay whenever i am into the office personal let stay personal professional let it stay professional right never try to mix two of these two lives together because what happens many a times even we human resource professionals we also have our emotions outflowing right so at that particular point of time we need to actually control our emotions professionally and personally both and at the same time we need to outlook on that particular candidate also that xyz person is joining how do i actually you know try to welcome this person in such a way in a subtle way that you know this person comes and gives a positive review as well right that is also equally important because see negative experience people face they put it on linkedin social media and everything culture it takes time to build a culture correct but it takes 2 seconds like to ruin a culture correct 
so what basically what i try to do is i try to so basically the way i am talking to you right now is the same way i talk to my employees as well whenever i come i greet my employees good morning so small small things can you know end up creating great connections i rather say now if i be an hr and if, if i try to show an attitude no why would i say good morning why would you know let people say me or something doesn't make sense right so if my one good morning can bring smile on anyone's you know in an employee's face why not right i try to do small small activities okay i try to make people laugh around so basically see i am a non localite of uh, amdavad right i try to speak gujarati and all i try to put my efforts okay for them so that you know at least they laugh because coders are uh, you know it takes uh, it is difficult for them also to do entire day coding coding you know around yeah, exactly. and small small gestures small small things you know can add up a great value in an organization i i, I prefer that yeah and uh, now i just wanted to be uh, to put a uh, environment of this like because the workforce mm -hmm. how do you really in, uh, ensure that what re workforce really wants the there is a time of the recession time is going on right now a lot has been yeah. changing the people wants to go for remote work only so how do you match the employees expectations and how do you prepare yourself as a leader for this important shift so basically when uh, you know uh, after pandemic okay when we started bringing workforce back to office it was a really challenging thing so at that particular point of time i saw that people are not ready to come back to office okay now how now this was a challenge for me as well as for my director as well how do we get people on board to the office we started doing small small activities on friday like fun fridays and everything uh, we also you know so basically you must have never seen an hr cooking in the hr pantry and you know uh, asking people to come and join for having snacks and all i decided okay let's try something new so we opened an op kitchen like wherein we the entire hr team used to you know uh, cook some sandwiches or something small small efforts made people come down to office today successfully you know people are working 60% of my work position is in office right now so small efforts we took and after that uh, see basically make people realize about the bonding and the time that they would be having in office so we brought playstation 5 at office okay people were crazy about it people like playing a lot over here then we are having tt we are having zinga carrom etc we created we try to create a game zone okay and people are very happily coming to office but yes there is a workforce those are remote also 40% workforce is remote right so what we try to do was we try to have three different models a hybrid model people can come two days to office then a permanent remote model people who want to work permanent remotely and then permanent work from office people who want to so we have given them an option to choose but at the same time we also ensure that people come down to office and they can strengthen their team bonding activities now i just uh, you know uh, we have talked a lot about about for the hr professionals from from a hr person now from 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 a interviewee per se i just wanted to shift this podcast so how to handle how do you handle the tough conversation in an interview and how to answer them without giving someone a benefit of doubt so while you know joining the uh, interview the interviewee has a lots of doubt uh, you know confusion in their mind about the job about their expectations how to put their expectation on the table so how do you manage all these situations and how do you make them comfortable so that you can make a good conversation out of it see first of all i would like to give advice to all the interviewees okay in case if you are not aware about anything okay you are worried about the tough conversations going on be calm be silent at that particular point of time don't try to overboard yourself with thoughts this can land you up into danger i would rather say instead of an offer it would be a repercussion of it okay in case if you are not aware about it see basically learn to say no if you are not aware about anything say okay i don't know and this has really worked magic for me let's say in case if i go for an interview if i am not aware about anything i be very transparent to an interviewer that hey sir or hey xyz i'm sorry but i'm unaware about this but i would learn about the same and i'll come back to you be transparent it's okay not everyone knows everything but let's say in case if you end up giving a wrong answer that can land you into 10 more questions which you will not be able to answer so it's good that if you be uh, you know open and upfront to a person and the other thing is being an interviewer 
I try to keep myself open minded to listen to people. Learn to listen to people as well. Okay, because let's say in case if you keep on interrupting a person, and if that particular expert, that person is not completing, you know, his or her answer, that will definitely panic that particular person. So instead, what you can do is just try to calm that particular person down. If you see that person is in a panic mode, try to calm that particular person down. Say, have a glass of water or something, and then restart your conversation. That is more important. And if you don't know anything, say you don't know anything. It's okay. It's okay to say a no rather to give a wrong answer that can land you up in a trouble. That's how it is. And this yeah. is how I advise people to handle the questions. Yeah, that's the great approach, and one should follow this approach. Saying no is the best practice they can follow. And I just wanted to know from your side, like you are you are dealing with client side as well. You are dealing, you are aware of the customer side as well. So, what do you think? You are recruiting for multiple position as an HR. So, what do you think? What are the key hiring trends? Uh, I should say technologies that HR be as an HR leader. You will suggest someone to learn at this point of time. See, currently the tech industry is evolving a lot. Okay. So cloud computing is one. Then artificial intelligence and machine learning, cyber security is booming in the market right now, and uh, because online frauds have increased and everything, so definitely there is a need of cyber security. Okay, and when it comes to mobile development, Flutter is trending in market. Okay, nowadays what happens is people, uh, you know, study this what we call uh, Android and iOS differently, but instead one can develop an application in the Flutter that can resolve both of your stuff. Into iOS and Android, so Flutter is booming right now in the market. Then definitely try to have certifications like Azure certifications and all AWS. Then blockchain, I would say it's booming right now. Blockchain, so the salary packages are amazing for these stuff. Amazing, whatever technologies I told right now, you can ask for n number of you know packages. See, easy. So you have filled the sauce on the table, so that maybe this <laughs> statement is gonna rock because these are the technologies that are definitely these are in boom. We can see all these industry certifications, cloud industry, yeah. AI, machine, application specifically, the chat GPT, the all these, you know the the upside trend that has been going on right now that has been practiced. Also, yeah. alongside the you know technical skills, if you could mention some of the soft skills that are necessary for the developers per se, so it would be really helpful. See, first of all, communication. Okay, communication should be fluent enough. Okay, in in case if you're working in a service-based industry, you have to deal day in and day out with clients. Clients can be across the globe. Okay, so communication, uh, your uh, email writing should be good enough. Okay, other than that, your team management, your confidence, everything should be to the par. Because let's say in case if you are working, for example, you are working single-handedly in the team. Okay. You're not confident to talk to the client. You will not be able to resolve the queries. That would end up again. Even if you're technically very sound, but if you're not able to, you know, understand the client well, if you're not able to understand the requirements well, what would you develop? Correct. So have those, you know, X Y Z skills with you. The one that I mentioned for and team management, team leading. Okay, these are the most important things. Uh, also, uh, I would I would also mention one good thing: uh, learn about Scrum Master the most. Okay, get AWS certified as well because these things would definitely add up a lot to your package also ahead. That's what I would say. It's not about the soft skills, but these two certifications, if you do, okay, it's gonna make you go go boom. So thanks for sharing these insights, and these are really helpful for the students per se, or the developers per se, or maybe everyone who is willing to get a job or who wants to explore that key tech trends or maybe the soft skill trends that would be beneficial for their career. And at last, so uh, if you could, if you have, it was really nice talking to you. And if you have any advice for these young generation guys or for these Gen Z people to share, so that they can just take, make most out of their interviews, and also for the HR leaders who are willing to pursue their career in the HR. Domain, it would be helpful for them. If you could share any last thought in your mind, I would like to say students who are currently pursuing IT. Okay, so bookish knowledge good to have. Be attentive during your practicals. Okay, be attentive during your practicals. You would actually and make your projects by your own. Do not buy projects. Okay, this is not gonna land you anywhere. Learn to make your project by your own self. Other than that, see industry collaborations are more important. A proper mentorship is needed. 
I would definitely recommend if I want to change one thing in an educational system, I would say that please, you know, pick some industry mentors and make the live sessions get done in the colleges so that people can, you know, get exposure to how working in real life scenario it is from office. This is the one thing that, you know, I would like to suggest. And the other thing is the curriculum should be designed in such a way that, you know, people get live exposure about uh, developing apps and everything. Just not the bookish knowledge, but the practical knowledge to the most. Right. Because when a person joins and the person does not know, you know, what deployment is, how to deploy a code, what is Zira ticket, people don't, people are not aware about it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I totally agree with these points. And guys, this is the second podcast of the HR Horizon series. And again, the same thing has, is circling back again and again because Mam is also mentioning about the projects you should focus on. There is nothing that you can achieve with just watching these video lectures, spending your hours on video lectures and putting you know making notes this will won't really help focus on your project build build some real time projects that will help you leverage your skills and practice your skills and practice as well yeah. you build your career as well right so yeah thank you ma'am thank you for joining in it was nice interacting with you we have a short a lot more things to discuss but due to some time limitations we have to keep it short sure. so thank you ma'am thank you for joining in it was my pleasure to host you and thank you guys for listening thank you guys thank you thank you so much lakshit for having me